I've got a Discord, links in the description. And a big shout out to A Kilo 21 who did pretty much everything in setting it up in their own time without asking for anything in return. So thank you so much and thank you for being so patient with me. I did notice that A Kilo 21, and I, I hope I'm getting your username right there, as in pronouncing it right, left some Juice World requests in there. And here's one of them. It's Lean With Me. If you are new here, then let me quickly introduce myself. Welcome, my name's Stuart. I'm a practicing psychotherapist from the UK, and I specialize in working with people who have experienced trauma. This isn't an in-depth analysis. These are just my initial thoughts of what's going through my mind at the time of viewing the video. The idea being that you get some insight into what immediately goes through my mind. Sometimes I speak about my clinical experience and presentations that I see in my practice. Sometimes I talk about my own personal experiences. And sometimes I talk about what's coming up for me personally in that moment and why I may be reacting how I am. That doesn't mean I'm right. Often I miss things. You might not agree with what I say. And sometimes I can come across as insensitive or cold sounding, but that isn't my intention. Often I'll make a lot of guesses or assumptions or ask your help on some things as I don't get long to process what I'm seeing and hearing. I do stop the video as frequently as I need to, depending on what my mind is, is throwing up for me. But I do try and fit this around where I think a verse or a chorus might end. Sometimes I can ramble on a bit. And if I do go off on a tangent or it's not relevant, I'll edit those bits out later on. So let's get into this. We have Lean With Me by Juice World. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things that I cannot change the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. All right. Right, 24 seconds in and I'm stopping already, but there's good reason. That's the serenity prayer. I love the serenity prayer. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. And whether you are religious or not, it doesn't matter. The words ring true anyway. We are going to experience pain as humans. It's a natural and normal part of being human and we can't change that. But we do have some control over how we respond to that pain. And when I say that, I don't mean to, to minimise what anyone is going through. I mean more that when pain shows up for us, what do we do? Do we push it away? Do we distract from it? Do we take substances to try and get rid of it? We all respond in different ways. And those ways depend on so many factors, you know, genetics, a transgenerational trauma, early childhood experiences, learning history, social support structures, family support structures, what we've tried before and has worked, cultural considerations, faith considerations, there's so many things that can have an impact on how we deal and respond to things. But we can change our responses slowly, with small steps, with help and support from others, with some practice, with some willingness to be vulnerable. We can make changes. I see it again and again in my practice. But it's not easy. It's very, very hard. And I do not say that lightly. And change is never a straight line. The journey to recovery, the journey to change can be some movement forward, some movement backward, a couple of steps in the direction, then one step back, sometimes five steps back. It's so, so difficult. 24 seconds in, I think. Yep. And I'm loving this track already. Let's carry on. Let's just hear the serenity prayer again. Serenity 
Jesus. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things that I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. All right. So we'll get into the big book and the 12 steps a little later tonight, but I always love to hear everyone's stories. Why don't you talk tonight? Drugs got me sweating, but the room getting colder. Looking at the devil and the angel on my shoulder. Will I die tonight? Oh no, is it over? Looking for my next high, I'm looking for closure. Laying with me, pot with me. Get high with me if you rock with me. Smoke with me, drink with me. Fucked up liver with some bad kidneys Laying with me, pop with me Get high with me if you rock with me Smoke with me, drink with me Fucked up liver with some bad kidneys Told her if I die, I'ma die yeah. So I just have to turn that down a bit in my headphones, it's really loud okay. Usually when you see depictions of, of groups like this on TV or in films, the main person usually resists opening up. They resist being vulnerable in front of the group. You know, they may deny that there's anything wrong and they don't need to be there. May only get a few words or a grunt or a shrug. <laughs> Not Jesus. Jesus is straight in there with lean with me, pop with me, which I apologise if I get this wrong as I, I haven't come across these terms before but I'm guessing they mean to partake in, in getting high with him. He's making it quite clear to everyone what his lifestyle was like. Imagine you're at that meeting and Jesus is circling the group singing this. It even seems like he's under the influence of something during this actual meeting as he says he's sweating, uh, but the room getting colder. Like when you're Body temperature is all messed up and you're sweating even though it feels cold. And a line that stood out for me there was, I'm looking for closure. Does that mean closure from all his pain? As in he'll take something to get away from the pain? Does it mean closure from having to deal with the pain this way and trying to find some other way in this 12-step group? Or does he mean a more permanent closure and look sometimes I get comments saying you tell us you're the therapist you know all of this is is open to interpretation I haven't got and I can't get juice in front of me to talk to him about what he specifically meant I'm just giving you an an insight into what's going on in my mind and if he said that sentence to me in a session then that's what I would be thinking you know, when he says closure, is that code for end everything? And I would certainly be clarifying that with him and, and trying to understand exactly what, it, what he means. Drink with me, fucked up liver with some bad kidneys. Told her if I die, I'ma die young. Every day I've been getting fucked. Uh, finally know the difference between love and drugs Shorty tell me I should really sober up This shit ain't fiction, it's too real, too real Fuck one dose, I need two pills, two pills I'm looking for trouble, so I know I'm gonna find it Ring, ring, plug, hit my phone, perfect time, man Seems to be a break there So he said, finally knows the difference between love and the drugs Shorty tell me I should really sober up so it sounds like he's he's found someone or someone's found him who he might who might care about him. He can tell the difference between. A, um, I don't really know how to put this, a, a, a manufactured high through taking chemicals, although I appreciate it might um, it might not seem that way to the body on a biological level. And uh, a natural high of an emotion like love, which which releases a ton of dopamine. I mean, I know you can argue that either way, chemicals release dopamine. Um, the emotion of love can can release dopamine, but it's all dopamine to the body. But one's like a manufactured way of doing it. And one's kind of a, a more natural human way 
I think. And it feels like he was beginning to understand and recognise the difference with that. Ring, ring, plug, hit my phone, perfect time, man. Yeah, okay. Nine one one, what's your emergency? I think my girlfriend overdosed. Is she breathing? What's your address? Hello? No, she's not breathing. What's your name and your address? Oh, I've got goosebumps. I know I'm not right, but I'm not. Is that a true story or is that for this video? And this is this the girlfriend he was just talking about saying that he should sober up? Did they end up getting together and taking something together and she took too much? I've got so many questions. Let me know in the comments what you know about this part of the song of the song. <clears throat> Excuse me. I know I'm not right, but I'm not wrong. No, I'm not wrong. Girl, you hate it when I'm too high, but that's where I belong. Where I belong. Lay with me, pop with me, get high with me if you rock with me. Sorry, I have to stop it again. I, I know you guys hate it when I stop it so frequently, but that line, I know I'm not right, but I'm not wrong. You know, we. I think I've spoken about this before with, with Juice. He knows his actions and the way he deals with things isn't right. But at the same time, if it helps him in that moment, then how can it be wrong? How can it be so wrong to do something that takes away the pain? We can't separate behaviours like this into right and wrong or good and bad because in some way the answer is usually both. And that leads us nowhere. That doesn't give us any uh, room for change. I've heard him talk about Gucci before, I think, and, and other expensive brands. Was that another thing he was into? I thought before he was singing about how he didn't really care for that stuff. But maybe I'm mistaken uh, listening to this. And he came to Hollywood from uh, the street life. Why does he specifically mention that? Is it because he has access to more stuff now, more money, maybe more of a, a blind eye turned to his behavior, so more opportunity? So it's even harder to stop now. But then saying that, it's not like it's easy to stop in, in, in kind of street life, you know, it's not easy to stop anywhere. Took too many drugs, now I don't feel right. Lane with me, pop with me, get high with me if you rock with me. Smoke with me, drink with me, fucked up liver with some bad kidneys. Lane with me, pop with me, get high with me if you rock with me. Smoke with me, drink with me, fucked up liver with some bad kidneys. OK. 
Okay, I think we're done. Right. That's a catchy chorus, though. And another one where you want to sing along, but you know there's so much pain and sadness behind what you were singing, and it kind of conflicts you. And I think musically, this is probably my favourite Juice World so far. Is there a journey here? Is there a journey with Juice World like there is with NF? You know, do we see a change in Juice over time? Like, is his really early stuff all along this same theme? Be interested to know. And will someone please tell me when The Party Never Ends is coming out? Someone messaged me last week and said it was dropping that week. And it didn't. And I was really disappointed because I was really looking forward to hearing it. But then saying that, there's still so much Juice World for me to dive into, listen to, react to, share with you if you want more. So thank you for listening. I hope you find my perspective and my take interesting. I appreciate I have a lot to learn in terms of some of the language being used, in terms of Juice's life. Um, but I'm here for that. I'm loving it. This, this style of music is completely new to me. And it's great. Thank you for sharing. Take care, everyone. Goodbye.